Hello organic students. Today we are going to talk about nucleophilic aromatic substitution. So we've been talking about reactivity with benzene rings and how attached groups affects its reactivity, i.e. activates it. Um, so let's see, just a little recap first, uh, and see if we can kind of mix and match these potential energy maps before we go on. So um, these are, excuse me, electrostatic potential maps. So what they do is show you the electron density in a region. So um, it's kind of Roy G. Biv co coded. So if you imagine R, O, and then we have like, you know, yellow. I'm just going to use the colors I have. Um, G, uh, and then we get to the blue region. So when you're in the red region, it's like hot. That's high electron density. And these are all drawn on Spartan. So um, why I'm bringing these up so that when we do our Spartan exercises it's uh, familiar. Blue, cold, or low electron density, electron poor. Okay, so that's your clue. If you look at, they're both monosubstituted, one belongs to anisole. Remember what anisole is? So that means we have a methoxy group on there. So it's an it's a ether. We know that's electron donating, right? One belongs to nitrobenzene. We know that's electron withdrawing. So the net effect should be if we have electron withdrawing, we have electrons coming out of the ring. If we have electron donating, we have electrons going toward the ring. So, in other words, by color alone, we should see uh, the warmer ring would belong to anisole, the colder ring would belong to nitrobenzene. So there's not a huge, I mean, we could see clearly this has to most likely be the nitrobenzene, right? Because we have the symmetric O's right here. Um, but look at that color. This is green kind of in the middle and then almost like teal outside. So we're getting in kind of that blue area here. Whereas here we're more greenish yellow. So green with some yellow. So we're actually in here. So this is the warmer set of colors, and this is the colder set of colors. So that means we have colder means we have electron withdrawing. So I have a the actual model that was used to predict this up here. So this is nitrobenzene. So you can see the nitro groups there. And superimpose that pretty well. Shrink it a little. There we go. And then anisole. It's right here. Notice how that lines up just right where that electron rich oxygen gives us that red region on the map. Right there. Okay, so I think we know nitrobenzene is here, anisole is here. So, why did this all matter? Well, remember in electrophilic aromatic substitution, which we're kind of recapping at the moment before we introduce a new aromatic reaction, we needed to react the, re the substituted benzene ring with an electrophile. Therefore, the benzene ring was a nucleophile. So to make something more nucleophilic, you had to make it more electron rich. That activated it toward the electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. So of these two, remember, nitrobenzene, is, which is more electron poor, Or this is more electron rich. Since it's the nucleophile and the nucleophile is more electron poor, this was a deactivated ring, whereas this was a, an activated ring, right? The reason we're bringing this up is because you're actually going to do the exact opposite. Instead of letting the benzene ring be the nucleophile, we're going to let it be the electrophile, which I usually abbreviate with a capital E plus. And so if we want things to be more reactive, so in other words, if we want the benzene ring to be whoops, a stronger electrophile, we're going to need to do the opposite. We're gonna to have to make it less electron rich, more electron poor. In other words, we're gonna want electron donating groups on there. That'll actually make it go faster. I'm gonna click, I said electron donating, electron withdrawing. Let's write it so that I <laughs> get the right one. So reactive if it's, if we're more reactive, it's electron poor. So these are, those were opposites. 
i.e. need electron withdrawing group on ring. Like nitro will be very ideal for setting up a nucleophilic aromatic substitution where benzene is the electrophile. Whereas in the previous case, electrophilic aromatic substitution, we need electron donating groups on the ring to activate it, right? So anisole would have been a favorite starting point. That would have been a good electron rich nucleophile. Now we want to kind of turn our brain, say we're going to the opposite end of the spectrum now. We're switching the roles, whatever's over the arrow, if that's the reagents, those are going to be. Uh, nucleophiles, the benzene ring is going to be electrophile. Okay, so that's one consideration to get in, keep in mind. And this, so that's the nucleophilic part. Now we're going to address the substitution part. We've heard substitution before. You may have memories going way back to the beginning. SN2, basic substitution, nucleophilic, right? That's the first one we learn. So just as a reminder how that works, remember you find your leaving group. You say, okay, here's our leaving group on the substrate. Um, Where's my nucleophile? Over the arrow right here, right? It's going to attack, backside attack, concerted. So remember that a SN2 has a concerted backside attack on the carbon bearing the leaving group. But that was always a sp3 carbon, right? So we could predict our product look like this. And this is, of course, an sp3 carbon because it's not part of the benzene ring. New group has inverted stereochemistry thanks to the backside attack. And so this is a familiar old friend, a sort of reaction, right? So we're just bringing that up again to remind us what, what constitutes a substitution. Why is this in the substitution family? Well, when you replace one group with another, then we have a substitution. So how did we know where the OH would go here, back from our um, OCHEM1 reactions? Well, OH, the new group, the nucleophile, replaces the leaving group. So in that sense, it's going to be similar to what we're about to cover. We're going to move the leaving group over to the ring, but the ring's not sp3 hybridized, so we can't call it an SN2. It could be a different reaction, totally in a different mechanism. So here we go. Leaving groups on the ring now. Now, we're not going to draw mechanistic arrows yet. We're just going to predict the product. Say, you know it's a substitution reaction. What happens? Leaving group's gone. New group. Find your new group. Nucleophile. Nucleophile takes its place. Okay, so let's do that. Just by analogy, we're going to draw what that looks like. So the bromine is gone, and the OH is in its place. So you just did a substitution reaction. You did your first nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Same logic. It's not always as straightforward. Clearly, there's going to be some uh, considerations to make and mechanisms to go over to make sure we don't uh, get into some pitfalls that are kind of common. But same logic. Um, new group was OH, replaces the leaving group. So you might say, well, what about this carbonyl? What's it doing? I remember it's a meta director, right? It's a meta director, but we're not doing meta. We don't have a meta product. That's because that's an elect uh, electrophilic aromatic substitution consideration, right? So no, this is not EES. Okay, we're not doing that right now. We're not doing electrophilic aromatic substitution, we're doing nucleophilic aromatic substitution. So I'm going to write out that phrase, even though it's the title of this section. Nucleophilic. Push up a little more. Aromatic substitution. We will often abbreviate it with SN instead of one or two, AR. Aryl substitution, SNAR, sometimes seems like to say SNAR. It's an easy way to remember it. Okay, so this has its own name. 
Therefore, the mechanism cannot be the same. But the logic is similar. We want, if we want to sp speed up reaction kinetics, sometimes we think about that, right? What, how can we um, make this reaction proceed more quickly? So one thing we could do is tweak our electrophile. Our electrophile is the benzene ring. So we can have an electron withdrawing group on there. And we can make it a stronger electron withdrawing group if we want to go faster. So more electron withdrawing strength correlates to a faster reaction. It's more reactive. It's a better electrophile. All right, makes sense. In fact, this reaction has three requirements. So I have a little mnemonic there because um, I like to go hiking, and it just reminds me when I think of those, the rule, you know, call it the rule of three, um, and it reminds me of leaves of three, let them be when you're on a hike and you see poison oak. Uh, so that's, that's why I have that in here, just to kind of tie that in. Um, you got to have it in threes. So when you have the leaves in three sets, that's a sign that you might have poison oak, plus some other things that you look out for, right? That's not the only thing. Like it likes to grow in the shade and that sort of thing, but often near a water source. Um, however, let's keep it simple and just start with the three criteria required together in order to have a SNAR reaction. Leaving group on the ring. So we must have a leaving group, something that you know you've been using as a leaving group all along. Halogens are probably the most common, but don't forget like tosylates and isolate, those are all okay too. We have to also have an electron withdrawing group on the ring, because remember benzene is now electrophile. So it needs to be electron poor. When one or two are met, there's a third requirement about the relationship of one and two. We need the leaving group and electron withdrawing group to be ortho para to each other. As long as they're not meta. That won't work and we're going to prove why, but we're going to start off with this list and we'll kind of prove the list to be true. Okay, so when you think you might see a reaction, so now we're, it can get confusing because we react benzene with the electrophilic 5 plus some other things that come up later, um, and then we have this new reaction, and we have, we're going to be asking, how do I know I'm going to do this one? So you have to have these three considerations. So we're always going to go, okay, leaving group on the ring, electron withdrawing group on the ring, and they are ortho para to each other. So you're gonna to have to kind of go through that, uh, methodically checking each of those before you're allowed to do a SNAR. So rule of three, SNAR at B, just saying. Kind of sounds like a pirate one as well. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready to put this in action and prove it. Okay, we're getting to the mechanism. So clearly different, name for the mechanism means they are not going to be the same mechanism. So let's, it's technically call, going to be going by what's called the addition elimination mechanism. Very exciting name. It actually is useful because it describes exactly what happens in two major steps. There's an addition step first, then an elimination step. Okay, so remember it requires that it's ortho or para, and we have a pretty good um, electron withdrawing group that's ortho or para to the leading group. For the, like this example, so here we have a para nitro to the bromine. Bromines are leaving group. So we have a leaving group. We have a electron withdrawing group. And then what's over the arrow? Na and H2. Remember that's an ionic compound because it has the bond to the metal and nonmetal. So it's really Na plus NH2 minus sodium amide. So our actual nucleophile is NH2 minus. So it's our nucleophile. All right, so what we're going to do is show how, remember, look at our goal. In a mechanism problem, the goal is often shown. You're not always predicting the product. You're proving how you got there. It's kind of like a math proof. Like these are, the statement's true. Now prove it. So it is true that this, can, this conversion can happen, but we need to show how. How does this bromine get replaced by the NH2? 
Okay, so we're going to do, the hint is there in the title, addition, elimination. So we should actually see in our um, mechanism an addition step and an elimination step. So let's see. Addition means that we're adding to a pi bond. The pi bond is going to temporarily be gone. Okay, so let's show that. I think I'm ready to show that. Yes. All right, so we have, I'm just going to get my, there we go, sorted. Make sure I didn't cover what I want to cover, and I did. Okay, so we are going to do addition first. That means take your nucleophile right away and add to the pi bond. Where? Well, we need to get, so if this is where the leaving group is, that's the carbon we need to be on, right? So think of it that way. Let's go attack. that carbon we have to release that pi bond otherwise we'd have five bonds to carbon so release the pi bond where can it go good question you can go all over the place around the ring but i'm going to do it in incremental steps and then um, when you feel comfortable with it you can kind of show multiple arrows in one step so it's going to land on the atom it was attached to So we get to resonant structure one, and we are going to draw the nitro out every time because it could, since electron withdrawing groups were a requirement, we're trying to prove why they're a requirement, then we're going to need to see the little structure. So plus, there we go. So nitro really is a sweater ion, but we have um, net neutral. So remember our the story of our arrows tells us what happened in the mechanism. So we have a minus here now. These guys were left alone. Nothing happened there. Bromine is not left. You don't just kick it off because that would have been an SN2. We're not doing the SN2. We do, we, it, it leaves later. Okay, so this was the addition step. How do we know we did an addition? We are missing this pi bond. We added to it, right? We added a sigma bond where there used to be a pi bond. All right, we need to work our way home, which means that bromine's got to go. Before we do that, though, we always show what? What do we always show in a mechanism? That's right, resonance. Always show all the resonance you can do, especially the first time we're looking at it. But in this one, it will be very important. In fact, the set of resonance structures we're about to draw have a name. <laughs> That's a sign that they're important. Okay, so let's draw the resonance structures which means we're going to move the lone pair that we just made everywhere we can, delocalize it. Well, look at that. It can actually go in two spots right now. It can go down here and kick this bond open, or it can go here and kick that bond open, the pi bond. So remember, we have an allylic lone pair, lone pair adjacent to a pi bond. Because I'll only get this chance once while I'm right here, I'm going to kick it out of the ring first and open that up. Thank you, Nitro, for adding extra delocalization, right? Uh, that's exactly why the nitro is so important. So we get to see, kind of spoils that right away. We get to see the aha moment. So two minuses. This stays here, this stays here. We are H2. So I hope you realize the significance of that. The minus that used to be in the ring is now, so this minus was always here, so that minus is still there, is now outside the ring, right? I will pause and write about that. Okay, but it still has more places to go. It's going to keep delocalizing. And since I need to push the electrons to delocalize that particular minus charge, I am going to um, draw the lone pair in. So lone pair to pi bond, pi bond to lone pair. If I land here, I'm back where I started. So that does me no good. So that means I'm going to add another arrow. Instead of going pi bond to atom, I'm going to go pi bond to bond. Oops, see that in red. Then pi bond to atom. So I'll stop there. And N, O, oh, oops. We have not a pi bond there. There we go. And 
Who else did we move? This guy stayed the same. Bromine's there. NH2 is there. Lone pair down there now. Okay, we're getting there, but we're not done because look, we're so far away from the carbon that needs to get rid of the leaving group and we need to work our way around because we started started with the lone pair right there. And so we've gotten this way. We need to work as far as we can and I could see we're still an allylic lone pair, so we're not done. Lone pair to pi bond, pi bond becomes lone pair on that atom. That should be a dead end, right? All right, so we have pi bond, pi bond. I'm gonna draw my nitro condensed now, you're welcome. <laughs> and uh, minus charge there, Br and NH2. That is in fact a dead end in the sense that we have no more resonant structures to draw. That's our entire collection. So let me um, just move this up. So I told you this has a name and it does. Um, we're gonna name that now. Well, the name's actually more than hundred years old. <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. It's called the Meisenheimer complex. Named after, you guessed it, a Meisenheimer, Jacob, Jacob Meisenheimer. So just like we had the sigma complex with electrophilic aromatic substitution, nucleophilic aromatic substitution gets the Meisenheimer complex. And I like looking at some of these old things, these old, this old history. So I actually have the paper, kind of just the, it's a 42 page paper, but just the, um, let me get if I zoom in on that. There we go. And here's the, the drawings that are like a lot more primitive back then. So Jacob Meisenheimer, it's totally in German because that was one of the prevailing, just that, that time period where a lot of this groundwork um, organic chemistry, and I'm not saying all chemistry, but organic chemistry really just kind of exploded around the early 1900s. And so, um, and a lot of that happened at the University of Munich, or at least it was published more heavily there. And so there's a lot of debate about whether um, other countries' simultaneous discoveries happened as well. But I'm not a historian, but so I'm going with what's in the book. But the Meisenheimer is very interesting because um, you can see purely German, 1902 is the date, it's very old, you're still, you're, even though you're learning a lot of new reactions that are modern, um, you're still covering, I mean, that's a sign that this is very classic, timeless, and fundamental, so it's, a, it's an important reaction. Uh, but you can see on the reactions of aromatic nitro bodies, I think that what is what it translates to. So. In other words, um, nitrobenzenes, in other words, reactions. So that's basically uh, what we're doing. And so you can see the work here on that. All right, I'm going to move that out of the way, but it's just kind of fun to see the how ancient some of these things look, even though we're drawing them in an iPad. All right, so now we have not even done the second step. We've done step one, addition, Step two is supposed to be elimination because it's an additional elimination reaction. However, we kind of, in the middle, we took a good, our time to draw the Meisenheimer complex. Why is it worth drawing the, all those resonant structures? This was proof right here, I'm gonna circle it again, that we have an extra stabilization when we are ortho or paired to the ring. So, extra stable. In fact, I'll draw my wow because that's the aha moment in the mechanism where you say, okay, now I see why um, we have to have ortho para relationship to the electron drawing group and the leaving group. If LG and, so it's extra stable if and only if LG and, uh, what am I trying to say? Leaving group and, um, oh yeah, electron drawing group are ortho para. So that proves it right there because we were able to get that extra resonant structure where it's not just going around the ring, it left the ring. So we've seen that before. Okay, are you ready to do the rest of the name for this reaction, which is elimination? So we did your initial addition. 
And now we're going to do elimination. So there's addition. We're going to do some elimination right here. How are we going to do that? We need to get home. What is home? Bromine's gone. Pi bond is back. We are re aromatized. Can we do that? Yes. Use this, pick a resonant structure, anyone you want, but this one is already really close, so I don't have to draw one arrow within the ring. Look, I'm re aromatizing. Benzene's back. Kick off the leaving group. Leaving group's gone. This is elimination. Form a pi bond, kick off leaving group. This is an E2 step. So that's hence the elimination right there. Okay. So those steps are elimination. So we did addition followed by elimination to get the final product. Okay, so step two. Okay, so we have named this already. This is the Meisenheimer complex. And after the German from 100 years ago, here's his paper popping up again. I meant to throw it off to the other side. Let's get ourselves ready for the next thing. No more of that. All right. So we had our little wow, aha moment when we saw that if we're ortho or para, the negative charge leaves the ring and adds extra stabilization. And I put that big fat if in front of it, IFF, ortho para. Well, look at this guy. This is meta. We have all the setup otherwise, though. We have an electron withdrawing group. We have a leaving group. We have a nucleophile. We are set up to do a SNAR, but we are not satisfying number three. So let's let's write out our little truth table so far. So we need um, remember those rule of three, SNAR at B. So one was we have a leaving group on the ring. Two, we have an electron withdrawing group on the ring. And three, we need the electron withdrawing group ortho para to the leaving group. So if we go back to our example, we have a leaving group on the ring. Nitro, right there. We have an electron drawing group on the ring, but we do not satisfy the ortho para. This one is meta. But you should hopefully want to know why that doesn't work, right? Why in the world does it need to be ortho para? Well, let's prove it. Okay, so let's do those steps that we did before. First, addition to pi bond. So we're going to try to do the same mechanism. So that means we take our Nucleophile, look, it's already formed as an anion for you. You didn't have to look at, um, figure out which part of the ionic compound it was. You kind of see it represented both ways, which is why I bring that up. Okay, so it's going to attack the carbon with the leaving group. And then we're going to release a pi bond. Put that lone pair there. There we go. And no more pi bond there. We have added to the ring, in other words. That's a negative charge. All right, I got a little lazy and I didn't drop my nitro, but I'm gonna need to do it next time. It didn't hurt me right now because we didn't, we're not over there yet. I kind of knew that. So I was letting myself slide a little. Okay, but we're gonna draw it this time. New pi bond there from that arrow, lone pair, draw up my nitro, pi bond, and leaving group on the same carbon as the nucleophile. Okay, let's work our way around the ring. What we want to do is see if we can leave the ring, like we because we can always work our way around the ring. That happens whether it's ortho, meta, or para. So here's the magic moment. We cannot push electrons out of here. When we come down here, we cannot go here because we're already making a new bond to this carbon. It has to let go of these electrons, so it cannot go here. They have to only go there. No choice. So I'm going to draw my NO2 again because I'm done with it. It didn't help me. Oops, I didn't draw my second arrow though. So this goes here. All right. All 
And that completes my set. Does it look different than the other set? It should. The other set had four separate resonant structures. This one has three. So it's not very happy. All right, unstable. No uh, resonance. Exo to ring. That means outside of the ring. So that actually just means no reaction. It's not going to happen with the elimination addition mechanism. So that will not be enough to get that to work. Okay, so we kind of had that question there. Does it satisfy the rules? No. Meta not allowed. And it was meta. So that's why you're going to require orthopara in order for it to be a SNAR reaction. So interestingly enough, chemists always find a way. Dow Chemical, which is a huge chemical uh, industry. Uh, so if you, you could work as a chemist, you could work for a pharmaceutical company, which a lot of people think that's the only route, but actually it's one of the more minor routes. There's many other op options. And Dow is an example of like materials that chemists make, paints and um, cosmetics or fibers and that sort of thing. So it's been around a long time, very well-known chemical company. And at Dow Chemical, they discovered this reaction. We can get bromobenzene to react with a nucleophile and be replaced. The leaving group gets replaced. But, I mean, this is not at all what we've been saying. There's no electron withdrawing group, let alone let it be an ortho pair to the ring. So it only actually satisfies one role. It has a leaving group. That only really works if you see really high heat and that will activate the ring because there's no electron drawing group there to activate the ring so we need the heat to do that for us. So you will either see a delta or a specifically higher heat than any other reaction that's um, going on in the chapter so like 350 degrees is common but um, you might see for example the other one set at 100. 100 for one reaction and 350 for the other one. The one that requires the highest heat is the one that can do this mechanism, which is different than the SNAR mechanism. And the reason they know it's different is because interesting things happen when you have more substituents on the ring. So notice there's no electron withdrawing group. In fact, there's an electron donating group. You can actually do this with electron donating group, but notice the heat, okay? So we're not doing SNAR. This is not a SNAR reaction. We're doing something else, and of course we're going to talk about it in a minute. But these are the results that were found that puzzled scientists at first. So the bromine, this is the expected one. The bromine was replaced, um, the, the OH replaced the bromine. So the leaving group's gone. However, this is the strange one, and this was in 50-50. So the reason that's strange is let's number these. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So, and I'm further going to track it with colors because some people prefer to color code when they're tracking. We're just doing a tracking to track our carbons. Others like numbers. Um, so notice that four got the new group, and that's what we've been doing all along. All carbons that have the leaving group get the new group. So if the leaving group's on four, the new group's on four. But look at four over here. It's empty. Well, it has a hydrogen. It didn't get the new group. So that's really interesting. This is 50-50. So one thing that's interesting is that there's an electron donating group on ring, and it still works. The second thing that's interesting is that the regiochemistry is not expected. In other words, we got a 
new group on the carbon alpha to the carbon with the leaving group. On C alpha to leaving group C. Okay, so let's assume that might be a rule. So by analogy, let's predict this one. And so to test whether it's a rule, this experiment was actually done. I, we labeled with color coding and numbers. If we're gonna do this in the lab, we can't get a molecule and like color it, right? It's tiny, but you can actually label it. You can replace one of the atoms with a different isotope that's not as uh, common. So carbon's usual isotopes are 12 and a little bit of 13. Right, so that's why its average atomic mass is like 12.01. But you can actually um, obtain isotopically pure carbon-14 and have that inserted into your compound and track that carbon. So that you, it's like color coding, saying this is my red carbon, this is my carbon-14 carbon. So let's make that our red carbon. So right there. All right, so that carbon is tracked. It's just like any other carbon, it reacts the same way. It's like having deuterium versus hydrogen, which we've done before. So it has the heat so that we don't have to worry about SNAR um, uh, issues. And this is isotopically labeled. That's what we call this process, this experiment. Label it with an isotope. So we can track it. So that means that when we draw our benzene, we will include drawing the carbon. We always draw the carbon, the isotopes that are not common. So here, here it is again. And if our rule is true that the carbon alpha to the leading group, carbon, can also get substituted, then we're going to have at least two products. So we've got bromine, used to be on that red carbon, carbon 14. The OH minus is our nucleophile. So OH replaced the bromine. And then indeed, they did see that alpha to this carbon, it doesn't matter which one you pick out of the system, because of the symmetry, we can pick this one or this one, but alpha to it, they did see the OH. So I'm gonna write this rule out now. Carbon alpha to leaving group can also, and will also, bond to the nucleophile. So that's what that experiment proved, is that with this non-SNAR route, we can also get products where not just the carbon with the leaving group has the new substituent, so does the one alpha to it. This is explained with the exact opposite mechanism. Instead of it being called the addition elimination, it is the elimination addition. So we literally reverse the steps. We eliminate first, then we add. What's in, so I'm gonna show you this with a very generic template so that when you go practice, you could try plugging in different groups. Okay, so in other words, take a benzene with any leaving group, any type of nucleophile, let's see what the electrons are doing and um, then you can make those variable. Okay, so look at the name of this mechanism. Elimination, addition. So step one, I'm gonna move this over a little so I can write up here. Step one is elimination. What happens in elimination? We need a base. So in other words, our nucleophile will act as a base to take off the proton alpha to the leaving group. Okay, so that means we need to do a little tracking. Here's my carbon, I'm gonna do it in green this time. Here's my carbon with the leaving group, and here's an alpha carbon. This is also an alpha carbon. I'm gonna take this one, doesn't matter which one, I chose this one because when we do an elimination, we're going, look at, we already have, when we do an elimination, we form a pi bond. We already have a pi bond. So we're gonna have another pi bond. Two pi bonds means we have a triple bond. Let's draw the consequence of that. Here comes our nucleophiles, electrons. Take the H, 
leave the electrons behind. This is all concerted. Kick off the leaving group. This looks just like an E2, right? You gotta tell those 211 students that E2 matters. It comes back in many forms, right? Okay. Oops, come on back. There we go. Look at that. We have an, a triple bond in a ring. This is actually, understandably, not very stable. So we are going to put that in brackets to recognize that it's just an intermediate. We do not isolate it, uh, but it's called benzyme. So the other one, the scenario, you get the Meisenheimer complex to evaluate. This is shorter. You get the benzyne intermediate. Then we're going to go to our addition step. Get rid of that triple bond. Go back to having the regular benzene. But we need the nucleophile there that's going to help us do that. So nucleophile. All right, so something to keep in mind why we get those two possible products. This is gonna answer it. The mechanism almost always answers these questions for you. Why did we get a new group on the carbon with the leaving group, i.e. we're still tracking dot carbon versus alpha carbon? Well, look at that. There's equal probability. Those are equivalent looking carbons now. There's equal probability that the nucleophile would attack either one. So I'm gonna color code these paths. I'll do red for this one which means that we release some electrons over there to the alpha carbon, or blue for this one, which means we let release electrons over to that dot carbon. So I'm gonna draw my blue product. In either case, we're back to benzene, yay. Uh, but nucleophile is here, that was the alpha carbon, or nucleophile is Let's see, I'll show the blue right there, red this way. So this was alpha, but now it's on the dot carbon. I am missing something. Yes, I opened up the pi bond, the electrons are still there. So in the blue case, they landed here. In the red case, they landed here. Okay. So in this generic template, it did not matter, thanks to symmetry, that two routes are possible, the blue and the red. If there's something to break that symmetry, then you gotta be careful about that. And we will do an example with that, but um, there's many more in the homework as well. So that's, of course, the higher level that could get a little hard, so make sure you to keep that in mind. Um, but going home, same process, whatever, conjugate acid of the base was, remember, we let the nucleophile be a base here, it took an H, that's gonna be our acid now to neutralize. So, we can take that, H, leave it behind. It's basically all it needs to get back home. And then we're done. So it's a short mechanism. Did we need to draw the red and the blue path in the future? No, unless they actually give you different products. Okay, so name our intermediate, benzyme. Now I'm going to go back here and give my wow face. This is a, this is a lecture full of wows because the, you saying aha, because right here we see Y, two carbons are possible for attack. And so I labeled my steps here. Step one, elimination. I said this out loud, but I didn't label it, which is another reason I wanna go back. Step two. Uh, where is it? Elimination, addition. It's actually way back here. That was just neutralization. Step two. And I abbreviate addition like this because we do it so often. So. Notice the addition, triple bond became double bond. We added the pi bond. New sigma bond in a, in, as a result. Okay, now I think we've thoroughly dived down into that mechanism. Let's put it all together. 
three possible mechanisms so far for aromatic substitution. Go back to our old friend, electrophilic aromatic substitution. So remember, that's when we have, you know, uh, benzene grabbing using its pi bond to grab an electrophile. SNAR and the last one is called elimination addition. When SNAR is, has a synonym, addition, so it's AKA, but we don't have a nice cute nickname for the last one, addition and elimination. So this is the one that, remember, has the Meisenheimer. So you need those rules. But this one is the one that has the benzene intermediate. So you don't need those rules. So keep, we ought to keep those straight. We ought to know we're going to get problems where we have a benzene ring that's substituted reagents over the arrow. How do we know which of those three possibilities and where there's a lot of rules established? So in that kind of scenario, I've encouraged students to make their own, but I'm making what, this one for you to start. Um, when you have possibilities, I think truth tables are a really nice way to solve through it. Well, this is a flow chart, but you can derive a, a, a truth table from it, which is kind of like a term used for programming. If you say, if this is true, um, then this, right? So if, the, if yes, then that. If no, then that. That's basically what we're going to be doing. Down here. We're going to ask a question. If yes, it's this. If no, it's that. And then we ask another question based on that answer. So we start at the top. We see benzene substituted. And we ask, OK, we could ask, is benzene the electrophile or nucleophile? Or we could alternatively ask, look at the reagents. Sometimes they're over the arrows. Sometimes they're on the other side of the arrow. And the benzene could be over the arrow. But the reagents are the non-organic substrate. Uh, the substrate is the benzene. So we look at the reagents, we say, are those acting as electrophile or nucleophile? Okay. So to simplify that, I just like to ask one question. Is my reagent an electrophile? If yes, we're done. Electrophilic aromatic substitution it is. OK, you stop there. You do your electrophilic aromatic substitution. If no, if it's not an electrophile, that means your reagent is a nucleophile. That means we're going to do SNAR or the benzene route. So we have to ask for the rule of three. What is the rule of three? Got to remember that. One, is there a leaving group on the ring? Two, is there an electron withdrawing group on the ring? And three, are they ortho paired to each other? If yes, SNAR it is. If no, then we have elimination addition. So in fact, if we, ask, if we answer no to all of them, but a reaction really does still happen, it could only have done the elimination addition, i.e. the benzene mechanism. So follow that. We start here. If we're saying no, 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 we end up with the benzene mechanism. If we say no, yes, we end up with the SNAR mechanism. If we say yes right away, we end up with electrophilic aromatic substitution. So you've got to expand your logic diagram, so your truth table. So this was our small truth table to start with, for, but we're going to expand it. We're going to add a little question to that first. We're going to say reagent, E plus reagent, not benzene, right? Then we look at this. If yes, if no, we go to EAS. All right, so let's put this in practice. We're going to name the mechanism, and we're not going to do the whole mechanism each time, because we've already done the mechanisms in great detail. The goal of this exercise is to maybe, if we don't know how to predict the product, is to see what parts of the mechanism we can kind of quickly sketch in to help us predict. OK. Let's start with our truth table. We have a benzene ring, so we need to ask those questions. Are my reagents, where are my reagents, first of all? That's the benzene ring. There's the groups on it. So this is the substrate. Reagents are over the arrow where they often are, but that's never a promise. Um, they could, you could put the benzene ring over the arrow and put these things over here. It's just not very traditional to do that. So, um, but that doesn't mean it's never happened. So your homework could have some curveballs like that. Because um, benzene's a substrate. That's important to recognize. Over the arrow, we have Na plus OH minus. That's a nucleophile, right? Good nucleophile. The second step's not always shown. That's, that's workup. So the important thing is that. And then we also have heat thrown in there. 
That's a hint that it's probably the benzyne route, right? Let's confirm that that makes sense. So step one, are the reagents an electrophile? Reagents electrophile? Nope, nucleophile. Step two, do we have the SNAR rule of three? Do we have a leading group? Do we have electron drawing group? And are they, if so, are they ortho para to each other? Leaving group, check. Electron drawing group, and eh, nope, that's an electron donating group. So ethyl is electron donating. So since we got a no on the second part of the truth table, we have only one option left. It must be elimination addition, i.e. the benzyne route. So I'm going to write that answer here, elimination addition. I'm going to abbreviate it. OK, so predict the product. I should actually say products because some of them have more than one product, like the benzyne ones often do. And I need a little bit of that mechanism to help me predict it because the benzyne one is sneaky. Remember alpha to the leaving group carbon, we can also get substitution. And then in the meta case, there's not even symmetry there. So we have to consider this alpha as different than alpha. So let's label them all. We could um, do colors or letters. So let's do blue, uh, green for the one for the leaving group, and then red over here. But if I wanted to number it or label it, I could say this is alpha, and this would be alpha prime, because alpha does not equal alpha prime, right? One's in between two groups, and one is farther away from that ethyl. So because there's no symmetry, thanks to the meta substitution, um, we're going to have to consider both alphas separately. Which is precisely why we're doing this problem adds a level up to what we were doing before. So in other words, we're going to make, this is what I mean by we need parts of the mechanism, I'm not drawing the whole thing out because we need to be able to solve these in a reasonable amount of time. However, let's just skip right to the benzene that we know will be there. That means the leaving group's gone. So benzene, benzene means that we could have formed that pi bond between red and green. And let's not forget these guys. Or we could have formed a pi bond between green and blue. And in order for that to happen, we would have had the res resonance of benzene where we look like that. And then remember, these are, of course, intermediates. I'm going to keep my color coding going, blue and green. OK, why does this matter? Well, in comes our nucleophile, OH minus. I'm going to draw that for the OH minus going on the green. I'm going to draw an arrow for the OH minus going on that red. I'm going to draw another arrow for possibilities. And I'm not, remember, I'm not really doing the mechanism. I'm just kind of just showing some work so that I could figure out how I got my final answers. OK, so I'm going to do color coding again. Let's do green first. If the OH goes on the green carbon, and I draw a better hexagon. I'm just going to draw a um, circle now because we're done with, there's no more benzene by the time you're done with the mechanism. Keep my ethyl where it was and forget. In fact, I, I accidentally dropped it from here, so I'm putting it back in. Okay, if it's on the green one, then OH is there. If it's on the red one, then OH is ortho to that methyl. If it's on the blue one, we actually have OH para to the ethyl. And if it's on the green one, in the second case, I'm going to do the circle. It's meta. Notice the greens, not surprisingly, are in fact the same, which is why I like the color coding for this kind of scenario. So we can consolidate those. We don't, we don't write those twice. That would be incorrect. So we consolidate them. So we have a meta, ortho, and a para possibility. So let's write that out in all one color now. Lots of products. 
that are all likely not one necessarily favored heavily over the other. Okay, so benzene, it helps to draw out those little key mechanism intermediates, so especially the benzene part. All right, so we have a couple more examples that I want to show you where you can apply this logic table again. So remember, get yourself ready. We're going to ask question one, reagent equals electrophile. And then we're going to ask question two if the answer to question one is no. Is that an electrophile? We have electrophilic five, that keeps it simple. That's not on the list. OH minus once again, that's a nucleophile. So no. OH minus equals nucleophile. We've gotta to go to step two. Step two is that rule of three for SNAR. We need the leaving group. We need the electron drawing group, and they need to be ortho para. Let's check. Leaving group. Iodine. Yes, good. We are clear on that one. Electron withdrawing group. CN. Nitrile. Yes. Are they ortho or para? Para, right? So correct. We stop here, and that means we are going to do the addition elimination mechanism. Other words, SNAR. I don't need the mechanism for this one unless, um, you know, you feel like that's what you need to get to solve it, but it's straightforward since we know it's substitution. <clears throat> the OH replaces the leaving group. There's none of this alpha business going on. I'll just write nitrile out with the CN. Okay, last example. Let's see. These are good to drill lots and lots of them, but I want to give three just because they all come out with slightly different scenarios. Okay, so step one, we're going to do our truth table again. Reagent equals electrophile. Before we go on, let's answer that question. Reagent, nitric acid, sulfuric acid. Is that an, is that an electrophile or a nucleophile? Definitely not a nucleophile. This is acid. <clears throat> Remember, nucleophiles are good bases, and this is a strong acid. So yes, we have an electrophile. Yay, we finally have that. I said it should look familiar. This is one of the electrophilic five, nitration. So this is elect electrophilic aromatic substitution. Which means we don't even call this a leaving group. <laughs> Doesn't happen. This is a director now, right? This ortho para director. And this is an ortho para director. So we play that game again. We say, okay, nothing's leaving. This is electrophilic aromatic substitution. Everything's staying on the ring. In fact, we get one more new group, but where does it go? This is more of a deactivator. This is more of a weak activator. This one wins. Parasite is occupied. Oh, parasite, see what I did there? <laughs> parasite. Uh, I know that's how it feels right now, but it's, it, it's fun, I promise, when you get more practice. So the para position is occupied. So ortho positions are available and ready to be reacted and they prefer that because this is the stronger activator. So what goes there? The nitro. So bromine stays there. So don't don't like get all um, hasty and kick bromine off. That's not what we did at all in electrophilic aromatic substitution. And so those are our products for that one. Okay, I hope that this truth table approach helps you with your homework, but nothing's going to help you more than doing lots and lots and lots of drill styles. So just go through all of, as many problems as you can. Probably going to repeat myself at the end of every lecture saying that, but there's really um, a lot of truth to that. Lots of problems. Okay, so I think it's a fun section. I hope you enjoy it and um, see you soon and talk about it and do more problems with it. So well. Oh.